All right, YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. We're at the top of the hour, approaching 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here in the state of Georgia, where we're talking about Auburn football. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Once you hear the content, please share it to whatever media outlet that you are, that you participate in. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. Also hit that cash app, dollar sign, Kennard Stewart at cash app. Definitely appreciate all the donations that have been coming in. Great to be an Auburn Tiger. Now we're going to talk about the secondary for the Auburn Tigers. There was an article that came out with AuburnRivals.com. Definitely a good read if you feel compelled to go check them out and it, and it talked about you know who's going to play in the secondary now Auburn has had a, had a little bit of turnover had some guys transfer out had some guys come in most notably Donovan Kaufman Drayshawn Miller got the Juco player of the year that has come through role that has come through and definitely a tel- talented plethora of players who still remain Especially Roger McCreary, Nehemiah Pritchett, right? Those guys are actually pretty good. Ladarius Tennyson, those guys are pretty good. You also got Smoke Monday coming back. Jalen Simpson that showed some promise early, but he was injured and um, didn't have the production. He got SEC Player of the Week, actually, but injury kind of sidelined him for a little bit. He came back, but we, we got a lot of promise there. But, but here's the real deal. Auburn Rivals, they're asking the question. The question on the floor is, who is going to play in the secondary? Now, my thing is, it's not who's going to play. All I think all of them have to contribute. Because if you think about it, over the last few years, the teams that have won the national championships, the teams that have performed on a high level, have had great quarterbacks, and they've had great wide receivers that average upwards of 17 yards per catch right Auburn in 2019 was the team that slowed down arguably one of the best offensive tandems of recent history in LSU what did they do they they implemented a 317 defense I did a video on a couple of outlets, including my own, where I talked about what Auburn needed to do to to even have a chance to win this football game. Joe Burrow at the time was averaging about 12, 14 yards per pass. I felt like Auburn needed to kind of kind of kind of chunk into that a little bit. I thought Auburn, in, in order to have a chance to win, had to condense that down to about eight yards per catch. Auburn exceeded mightily. But how did they do it, though? The same way that Auburn has the opportunity to have the same opportunity in 2021. You got to have a lot of capable guys in the secondary that can play multiple parts. They can tackle well. They can cover space well. Um, They can match up with the best wide receiver. Let's just say, coming into the Georgia game, I think, you know, they've done a good job of recruiting at the wide receiver position, albeit will not have George Pickens. But if you have a diverse set of secondary guys, you can say, hey, look, even though this guy didn't start last week, but he has the skill set to where I think he can lock this particular guy down. Penn State is no slouch either. They like to sling the ball around a little bit too. So the biggest deal is it's not who's going to play. It's how the Auburn defense, Derek Mason, how are they going to utilize these guys? How are they going to utilize these guys and give themselves the best opportunity from a game planning standpoint to give themselves a chance to compete? And with with the situation that you have, I think you got a really, really good case scenario. 
These guys are really good. Three stars are better. Roger McCreary wasn't that high of a star, but man, he's definitely developed into one of the secretly coming into this season. Might be one of the better cornerbacks, at least in the SEC West. We'll give him that. We won't take that away from him. Might be a stretch to give him one of the best in the country. There's a lot of good cornerbacks out there because now you have to be. If you're going to compete at the power five level on the elite level, you have to be among the best because these receivers are really good. And from a rule standpoint, they have the advantage. You can't touch them too, too much. They can touch you. They can put you off. But they have the competitive advantage. And for you to be successful on defense now, you have to be absolutely loaded in the secondary. And I think Auburn has done a pretty decent job of giving themselves a chance to do this. Drayshawn Miller was a part of one of the best Passing defenses in the country at West Virginia. His buddy Tyke Smith took his show to Georgia. I don't know what is uh, falling apart there. But you're talking about two good games. If Auburn could have got Tyke Smith, it would have been an absolute wrap. On the offensive side of the field, yes, Auburn is going to have to produce. But I think Auburn is in a great position not only at the secondary position, but they got some speedsters at linebacker who can cover. Guys like Owen Pepo or guys like, you know, Zacoby, Zacoby, Zacoby McLean, who's coming back. Let me know what you think about this video. Go ahead and leave a comment, like or dislike if you choose. Dollar sign Kennard Stewart on Cash App. If you want to donate, let me know in the comment section what you want to talk about next, because there's a lot on the floor that we can talk about regarding Auburn football. Definitely appreciate the support. It costs you absolutely nothing to subscribe to this channel. And I want you to do so, man. We've grown by leaps and bounds. I remember when I first started, I got my, my 10th subscriber and I was ecstatic. I get a new subscriber now, same level of excitement. Definitely appreciate that. Also, when you look at the SEC West, SEC East, it's going to be a lot of competition, a lot of coaching changes that have made this thing really competitive to where we got to look at a lot of different things. You can't look at Arkansas the same. You can't really look at Ole Miss the same or Mississippi State. Now, I'll say this. I don't think with the skill sets of the secondary, I'm not too sure about the air raid offense at Mississippi State, and we kind of saw that last year. They did expose LSU, but other teams were not buying it. I think the secondaries in the SEC is just a little bit too good for an air raid type of offense to be really effective. That's just my opinion. Now, we'll wait to see what kind of recruiting they do. They got to have some elite receivers. And you got to be able to fool some folks. And the days of days of fooling folks are absolutely over. As always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle.